Markdown is a very common syntax format for things like readme files and various other things like that where you just want to do a very simple document. But isn't it a little annoying that you don't have Markdown highlighting within your terminal? So today I'm going to take a look at a program called Glow which does exactly that. So if you're new to this channel, remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below because it'll really help the channel out. I'm aiming for a thousand subs and any help be really appreciated. So now that's out of the way, let's get started. Good afternoon everyone and welcome back to the channel. So Glow in and of itself isn't a super useful program, but it follows the Unix philosophy in which it does one thing and it does it well and you can use this in combination with some other tools and actually get something very useful out of it. So I'll show you what the actual GitHub page looks like. I'll leave a link to this in the description down below because there's like three or four different projects all named Glow. This is a terrible name for it, and they're all like AI and neural net related, so you're never actually going to find this one, so I'll just leave a link directly to this in the description. So, this is a very, very simple program. All it does is handle markdown highlighting. So this is an example of what it actually looks like. It actually looks fairly nice, so you can actually pass in different themes for it as well. I'll show you what that looks like in just a moment, but let's just have a look at the basic usage for it. So if we run Glow, and we do readme, so I've already got this actual page downloaded, this readme file downloaded, and we're gonna run this in here. So it will then output all of that. So if I scroll up, you can see all of that. It looks fairly nice, and by default, it's using the dark theme, I believe, which is a very intelligent choice, but there is also a light theme available. So let's just jump back to the GitHub page for just a moment. So if you want to install it on macOS, you can install it with Brew. Arch, it's available in the AUR, and on FreeBSD, you can use PKG. The other option is to compile it yourself with Go. It's not too difficult, just follow what it says to do here. It's just one command, and that will install it. This has the basic usage here. So we went over reading from a file, but you can also read from standard in. You can also, oh, I didn't realize you could do that. Oh, let's try that. You can apparently read from GitHub and GitLab. So I didn't actually have to download that file. If you run that, yeah, that will do the exact same output we just had. So that will take this readme file from this GitHub page and then just put that into Glow. That's actually really useful. And you can also read from a HTTP request, which is also really cool. So if you've got some readme file stored on some server somewhere or whatever reason you're wanting to use it like that. But just being able to run Glow with a GitHub or GitLab page link is really useful. And obviously being able to read from a file, useful. Standard in, you're probably not going to use as much, but it's nice to have that option there. So there is also the option to do word wrapping. I also did a separate video on a GNU util for word wrapping, but if you want to word wrap within this program, that's also an option. So if we do this right here, so if we don't provide it with a file, what it will do is try to look for a readme file by default. So if we run that like that, it's going to bring up this readme file and word wrap at 60 characters, I believe. Let's put it at something less so we can notice a difference. There we go. So it word wraps at 20 characters like this, but it doesn't break words, which is nice, definitely. So you might have noticed that it doesn't actually do any paging. This isn't necessarily a problem. So as I said, all it does is handle markdown highlighting. So if you want to do paging, you have to do that yourself. So if we do glow, and let's say we want to do the readme file, and let's say we want to pass that into less, which is my pager. It's that you don't really need any other page besides less. So if we run that, let's see what happens. And we notice a problem here. So if you see, we don't actually have the highlighting anymore. This is a problem, but it's not a problem with the program. There is a very simple fix for it. So for whatever reason, the developers decided to strip the highlighting out if you don't pipe it to a terminal. But if we want to force the highlighting anyway, what we can do instead is pass in the dash S option. So that will let us define what style sheet we want to use. So by default, there are two installed. So there's the dark style sheet and the light style sheet. I'll show you how to use other ones in just a moment. We pass in dark, then we pass in readme.md, then we pipe this into less, 
and dash R. So the dash R option will, with less will read the raw color characters. So if we pipe this into less without the dash R option, what's going to happen is it's just going to print out all of the text with the color characters actually just printed to the output. So I'm guessing that's the reason why it doesn't do the coloring by default. So if you do want to actually print it somewhere where you don't have ANSI uh, syntax parsing, then you can do that and not actually lose your text output. But if you're doing that, you probably shouldn't be using Glow to begin with. I guess it's just a safety precaution. So with that, if we combine those two, then we can have a pager. So if we have a look in my configs for my shell, so I've talked about this in a separate video where I've basically modularized my shell config. So that's why I've got this into separate files here, but it's not too important, the actual structure of it. You can just drop this into like your bash RC or your Z shell RC or anything like that. So we've got this function in here called MD less. So what this will do is it will do exactly what we just did before. So it runs glow on whatever input we pass into it and it will run it with the dark theme and then pipe it into less dash R. So if we run that in here, so let's just quit out of this cause this is already zoomed in. So MD less, let's say we want to read the readme file for example, then that will bring up that readme file within Glow. Obviously I can do the, all the same stuff that I did before, like reading from standard in or a GitHub link or an HTTP link, but you can't do just nothing in this case, I believe. Maybe you can. I haven't actually tried it. Will it work with nothing there? Yes, it will. Okay. It'll just send a empty string to it. So it'll work just fine. Okay. That's useful. But doing this, it will let you actually use a pager without having to remember to do that pipe as well. And all those options you have to do. So that's a nice thing you can do there. So there is one other use that I've come up with this. So I've mentioned in a previous video, I've mentioned a couple of videos that I use the LF terminal file manager. So if we bring LF up, then we go into GS dot. So that is my preview script. So with LF, you define a script that you want to use to preview files. So this line right here, what this will do, the one that I've just commented out, when I go to preview a markdown file, it will pass it into glow and use the dark theme on it. So like with the same problem I had with less, I have to define exactly what theme I want to use with the dash S option. Otherwise it's not going to work. So as I said before, that's just sort of like a, a safety precaution in case you're printing to somewhere that doesn't actually parse ANSI characters. So now that I've actually commented that out, let's just bring up LF again and go down to that readme file. So as we can see in here, it's got highlighting, but this is using the same highlighting that my like JSON files and my text files are using. So not the actual highlighting that I want. So this isn't actually parsing the markdown characters or anything like that. It's just trying to highlight it with the highlight program. So what if we wanted to use the highlight? Let's go back and uncomment that line. So let's uncomment this and reopen LF. So I can actually reload the configs and jump down to that readme file again. So now it's using the exact same program that I was using just before. So now I can actually view markdown files. That is the wrong key. I wanted that one. Uh, that one. There we go. So now I can actually view markdown files within LF using that same syntax highlighting that I was using before. So that's really cool. Obviously, this doesn't fit in with the same theme that I'm using for highlight, but it works well enough and I like it like it is. So let's say I did want to change the theme. How would I go about doing that? So if we switch my webcam back over there, go back to the GitHub page. So if we come down to the bottom where it starts talking about styles. So as I mentioned, there are two styles by default. There is the dark theme and the light theme, but you can also pass in just JSON files for styling. I'm sorry if it's loud outside, it's really windy out there and I can't close the window because I've also got the ducting on because it's 37 degrees Celsius right now. So hopefully it's not too bad. Anyway, if we have a look at this link right here, so the make your own link, this will go through everything you need to do to define a glamour style sheet. I'm not going to go through this in this video. I haven't had a in-depth look at it, but it's basically just a JSON formatted CSS pretty much. So if you've ever done CSS, it should be pretty easy to work it out. You've got all of the stuff you have to work with in here and it'll tell you exactly what the values it takes are. And it doesn't look too difficult to work out. I'm sure if you've ever done 
any CSS, you can probably work it out. If you haven't though, I might do a separate video on this if people are interested in it because these style sheets are used for other applications besides Glow. I'm not sure what else uses them, but presuming that it's a sort of syntax formatting, I'm guessing other things use them. So it's probably a good idea to go over how they work. So I reckon that's pretty much everything. I'll show you what the man page looks like, or the help page, because it doesn't have a man page, I believe. Man glow. Glow. Yeah, no man page. Glow dash H though. See, this is why it doesn't have a man page, because there are four options, because all it does is highlight text. So, I think that's pretty much everything. So if you want to merge this within, say, Ranger or something, I, ha I don't use Ranger anymore, but it's probably fairly similar to what you do within LF or any other terminal file manager. I'm sure that you can find some way to integrate it if it lets you do previews. So I reckon that's pretty much everything for this video now. So if you like this video, remember to smash that like button and leave me a comment down below letting me know what you think. If you want to see more videos like this, remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below because it'll really help the channel out and it'll let me know that people actually want to see more videos where I'm just going over random programs like this. So as I said before, if you want to see a video on Glamour style sheets, let me know and I will go over them. But for now, I reckon I'll just let you guys work it out for yourself because it's not... It's, it's pretty easy. But... If you do want to see that, then let me know and I'll be happy to do that. So, up on that corner, I've got the playlist this video's in. So, go check that out if you want to see other videos like this. Down below, I've got my Discord. So, if you want to chat with me, I'm in there most days. So, go check that out and send me a message or whatever you want to do in there. Also, I've got my library. So, if you want to see my videos on a platform that isn't YouTube, go check that out and all my YouTube content's over there. So if you don't want to subscribe because of that, then that makes perfect sense. So also down below, I've got my support links. So if you'd like to support the channel, go down there. I've got my crypto wallets and also my Patreon and my PayPal links. So any of those would be absolutely appreciated. But obviously, you don't have to support the channel if you don't feel like doing it. And lastly, I've got my Twitter and my Mastodon down below. So if you want to get video updates, that's the best place to get them. Twitter's probably better. I'm more active on there. I don't really use Mastodon. I just kind of push the updates there and then just let the platform do whatever it does. So I reckon that's pretty much everything for me now. So I'm out.